It is a gorgeous September Saturday in Ann Arbor, Michigan. We welcome you to the University of Michigan. The season opener. Appalachian State, the Mountaineers come to the big house to take on the University of Michigan Wolverines. And for the first time, the maize and blue take the field. Hi again, everybody, alongside Charles Davis. I'm Tom Brenneman. Welcome to the season kickoff of the Big Ten Network. You it was Michigan, and they had a lot to accomplish. They were talking about unfinished business. They needed to beat Ohio State, win the Big Ten, make a run at a national championship. I knew something about Appalachian State. I actually have family that are graduates there. I knew they'd won back-to-back, -back, won AA championships, so I knew this was a really good program. So it's not like that th this team was coming in so outclassed that you thought, okay, what kind of game will we have here? First of all, I don't think they really know the story. The story is, while we're sitting in pregame meetings, actually I think we may have been either in the green room or at the desk, someone, one of the wise ones of the group said, it's no way they could lose this game. So we don't even need to worry about that. I remember Dave Refson saying before the game that there is no way in the world that Michigan's gonna lose the App State. Third and four, they cash in on the third down, and maybe more. Off to the races, and going all the way to the end zone, the speedster Dexter Jackson. And now four of the top of your screen. Slam, catch made, and that is a touchdown for the Mountaineers, Hans Bereshon. And the quick slam is Jackson, he'll run away from everybody. Touchdown, Appalachian State. Now Edwards will find the end zone, touchdown Mountaineers! I remember going to halftime, Tom Brenneman asked me something about could this possibly happen? Because you remember at the half, Appalachian State was up 28-17. So at that point, it started to crystallize for me that this could happen, but I did feel that Michigan would run at them, and they did, and we ended up having the incredible finish. Your team is up 28 to 17. What do you do in the second half to keep them calm and finish this thing out? Well, we're going to catch the, the best that the Big Ten's got. The, best, the way they would play against Ohio State, Notre Dame, Rose Bowl. And uh, we're enjoying the moment right now. We're just going to try to stretch that moment another 30 minutes. Hard again. And into the end zone is Mike Hart. And now Hart, the senior. Still on his feet, cuts it back the other way. Hart to the 10, to the five, touchdown! Does he make it? You're up four. That means a touchdown for each of That's a long way to go for the Appalachian State. And that is blocked to the line of scrimmage. And they're telling him, don't touch it. Now, how do you keep him out of field goal? Like, remember, no timeouts, but every first down stops the clock. Second down, they're coming after Edwards. And he gets it away, caught by Corman, dances away from one tackler, down the sideline to the 40-yard line. Edwards rolling left, throws across the middle, caught by Hillary, all the way to the five-yard line. This is for one of the greatest upsets in the history of college football. And it is good. A two-point lead for Appalachian State. There is still time, of course, for Michigan. And he steps up, puts it in the air down the sideline, looking for Manning, man. I was in the control room with our executive producer at the time. And it was this fantastic game. And I turned to him as they were coming out to line up for the for the final kick. And I said, this really couldn't have been any better. It was an up and down game, it was really close. Michigan makes this great play at the end. They're gonna come out, kick a game winning field goal. This is gonna just be great for the network. And the producer who was not a Michigan grad, <laughs> like I was, looked at me kind of quizzically and he said, would it be better if he misses? Here we go. They're gonna kick the field goal. Jim Gell out of the hold of Mesco. Good snap, good hold. And the kick is blocked. Appalachian State has stunned the college football world. One of the greatest upsets in sports.
Bucks history. It was really shocking as we were sitting there watching this thing unfold. From my perspective, being a former player, this really talks about how you always have to be up for each and every one of your opponents because those guys had some players on that team that, that were really dynamic and really gave Michigan all they could handle. The toughest thing for me is my friendship with Lloyd Carr. And it was so emotional for me and I felt so bad for him. And I'm not a fan. And this one broke my heart to see Lloyd Carr lose to Appalachian State because we all knew what was coming in the post-game narrative. Coach, one of the greatest upsets in college football history. You knew it. You knew your guys could do this before. They are winners. You not only silenced the folks in the big house, you stunned them. Well, we've got a great, we got a great bunch of young players here. This is just a crowning achievement for them right here. Even the, it won't be any more important in those last two national championships, but it certainly ranks right in there close. I'm not sure we understood the significance at the time, at least immediately. And I wasn't feeling very good at all about that. And then I talked to Mark, and Mark was describing to me an alternative silver lining. Shortly thereafter, it was a lead story on SportsCenter for probably the next 36 hours. All these highlights had the Big Ten Network bug, their logo uh, on all of the 100 million homes that ESPN was in at the time. We had local TV stations calling us for clips of the game. We had the media calling us. And so all of a sudden, the, the narrative that BTN did not have any compelling games was thrown away. We just had arguably the biggest upset in the history of college football that aired on our air. We were able to get several more distribution deals done within a week or so of that game. We had all these different fan bases and it really resonated throughout that a game of this magnitude was on BTN and we're gonna have a lot of your games coming up and you better make sure you get Big Ten Network.